Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about sorting with filtering. So in the previous video, we looked at this optimization called duplicate filtering, where the idea was we could pre-process our data and filter out the duplicates so that we would only process the unique values from our input. Now we're going to be applying this technique to sorting today, but how exactly is something like duplicate filtering applicable to sorting? So let's think about a, a very simple problem here. So say we want to sort a vector of integers, right? So say we have a vector of 100 integers um, where the values are random numbers between 1 and 5. So we have a lot of duplicates in this vector. Now, typically, the way we would do this in C++ is we would just call std sort. Right? We would sort our vector. Now, um, let's think about what the output looks like after we call std sort and where we might have an opportunity for duplicate filtering here. So if we were to print out that vector, what we would see is a group of ones followed by a group of twos, then threes, then fours, then fives. Right? And very importantly, all the duplicates seem to be clustered together. Right? So all the ones are clustered together, and all the twos are clustered together, and threes, and fours, and fives. So if, if we really think about it, what we're really trying to solve here is where do the unique values sit in our vector with respect to each other? Right? So in this case, is where do 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 sit in the vector with respect to each other? Because all the duplicates will just be centered around those values, right? All the ones will be together, and all the twos will be together, and all the threes will be together, and fours, and fives. So, you know, what we'll be implementing and benchmarking today is this idea of let's pre-process our data, right, which hopefully should be cheap, and filter out the duplicates. Then we'll solve a much smaller problem for sorting. So instead of sorting a thousand elements or 10,000 or 100,000 elements, we only have to sort, you know, 10 or 100 elements, right? Just the unique values. So that should hopefully save us a lot of time. And then we can reconstruct the entire sorted vector, right? And so as long as this filtering and this reconstruction of the sorted vector aren't prohibitively expensive, right? We should hopefully save on execution time. So very importantly here, we're not changing the algorithmic complexity of sorting. It's still an in login operation. What we're really trying to do here is change the size of the vector that we have to sort. So not sort 10,000 elements, just sort the 100 unique values and hopefully do something cheap like duplicate filtering and you know reconstructing this vector, which should be linear operations. And this should hopefully be a lot cheaper than sorting some huge vector. So let's benchmark that today. So let's go ahead and open up our code. Um, so this is all implemented with Google Benchmark. So we'll, we'll test this in a number of different scenarios, right? So we'll test it with different vector sizes. So a size of 2 to the 14 elements, 15 and 16. And we'll also look at with different distributions of input data. So you know, random numbers between 0 and 10, 0 and 100, 0 and 1,000, and 10,000. So this will change how many unique values and how many duplicates um, we have in our input data. So let's look at our three benchmarks we'll look at today. So the first one, very simple, it'll be our baseline. This will be our just call std sort implementation. So our setup code will be pretty simple. We create two vectors, our input vector of random numbers and our output vector which will have our sorted vector as a result. So we first fill our input vector with random numbers, and then every iteration of our benchmarking loop, so this is where we're actually timing things, we'll go ahead and reset our random numbers. So we'll copy V in into V out. This ends up being fairly cheap in compared to the cost of sorting. Um, so we can just ignore that overhead. And then we'll go ahead and just call std sort on V out. Right? So this is our just call std sort benchmark or, or baseline. So the next thing we'll have is our slightly more clever implementation using an unordered map. So we still have our input and output vectors, but now we have um, this filter right here. So this filter is what we'll use to uh, pre-process our data and filter out the duplicates. So our, our keys for this filter will be integers, which will be the unique values. And then the values for this unordered map will be the number of times that we saw the unique value, right? So the number of ones that we saw, the number of twos, the number of threes, the number of fours, et cetera, et cetera. Because we need to keep track of that if we want to reconstruct, right, the, the entire sorted vector, right, as an output. 
So then after we create those, we go ahead and just fill our input vector with the random numbers. And we'll also have this vector called temp here. Um, and, and this vector will store the unique values that we're going to sort. So instead of sorting the entire vector VN, we'll just sort temp, which should hopefully be much, much smaller than VN, right? If we did our sorting right, um, and if there were enough elements in our input that were duplicates to filter. Okay, so let's look at our, our benchmarking loop, which is a bit more complex now, but we're doing a lot more in here. So the first thing we have is basically our data pre-processing. So this will be our duplicate filtering. So for our duplicate filtering, we go over every single element in our input. So for I and VN, for each of these elements I, we check to see if it's in our unordered map already. Have we seen this element before? If we've seen the element I before, we increment the number of times that we've seen it, right? It's a duplicate, we've seen it before, keep track of the number of times that we've seen it. So we do filter of i++. Plus plus. Otherwise, if we've never seen this element before, so if i is not in our unordered map, we add it to our unordered map and we say that we've seen it once. So that's what we're doing here. We also add it to this temp vector, right? Because it is a unique value. It's not in our unordered map yet, that means it's a unique value. So it'll be one of the unique values that we're going to sort, right? In this much smaller vector temp. So after we've done this data pre-processing, we have our sorting to do, right? But our sorting, instead of being on VN this time, is going to be on this temporary vector temp. So we'll go ahead and sort temp, and then we'll recreate our entire sorted vector V out. And the way we'll do this is we'll go through our elements that are in sorted order in this temp vector. We'll look up inside of our filter how many times we saw that element, so how many times we filtered it out. And then we'll go ahead and push back however many times that was into V out. So we're reconstructing our sorted vector V out here, right? We're not sorting V in directly. What we're doing is we're reconstructing what the sorted output would look like, right? Based on our filter and our uh, smaller vector temp of the sorted unique values. And then we clear everything after each iteration and do it all over again. Okay, um, so that's our more clever implementation. And we'll have a third implementation, which is basically just a copy of the second. But instead of using an unordered map, we're going to go ahead and use a different kind of hash table, right? So we'll use a hash table from Absale instead of from the uh, standard library. So we use flat hash map, um, which is generally better in, in most situations compared to the, um, the, the, the standard unordered map. And so we'll go ahead and try that one out as well. So the, the only difference here is that we're using a flat hash map instead of a stood unordered map. And I'll go ahead and link uh, to this documentation below the video um, to these containers. Okay. So, so let's go ahead and benchmark these and see where we wound up, right? Does doing all this extra work actually help us at all with sorting? Okay, so we'll go ahead and compile this with O3 optimizations, mArch equals native, mtune equals native. And then we'll go ahead and run it. And it'll start first by running our, our baseline benchmark, which again is just call stood sort. Then we'll run our unordered map one, then our flat hash map one. So there's a couple things we see right off the bat in terms of patterns. Of course, as we increase the size of our vector from two to the 14 to 15 to 16, um, of course, the execution time is going to increase. So, um, you know, as we increase from say two to the 14 for our baseline for, you know, random numbers between zero and 1000 um, to two to the 15, right? It, it goes from around 577 microseconds up to about 1100 1160 microseconds. So roughly double the amount of time to sort um, twice as many elements. Right? That's about expected. Um, another neat thing to kind of observe here is that as we increase the number of unique elements inside of our input vector, it actually takes longer to sort, right? If we have a ton of duplicates, it's actually faster to sort than if we have a ton of unique values inside of our input. So when we only have say 10 unique values, so random numbers between 0 and 10, it only takes 309 microseconds to sort it in our, our stood sort baseline. Um, versus if we have between 0 and 10,000 elements, it actually takes you know, over twice as long. It takes about 676 microseconds, right? So that's another thing we, sh we, we should observe here. So let's compare it, of course, to 
the unordered map now. So how do we do? Well, for, for the small case, for the case where we have a ton of duplicates, it looks like all those extra costs of um, you know, filtering out the duplicates and then reconstructing this vector, it makes unordered map a little bit worse when we have a ton of duplicates. So it's about 319 microseconds here versus 309. If we look at the other 10 case, it's about 638 microseconds here versus 626. So still a little bit worse um, for the most narrow data distribution. And then 1275 microseconds here versus 1319. So a little bit better near the end. But you see, as we increase the number of unique values, say from between 0 and 10 to 0 and 100, we start to actually see an advantage here. So if we just look at, say, the random numbers between 0 and 1,000 case, it takes 393 microseconds for unordered map case for a 2 to the 14 size vector versus 577 microseconds for our baseline. And we see similar trends around the you know, 0 to 100 and 0 to 1,000 data distribution for each of our vector sizes. So here about 712 microseconds versus 1159 microseconds, and then 1347 microseconds versus you know, 2300 microseconds. So we're seeing some significant advantages here, um, but not all the time. It seems like we need, um, we need a certain amount of unique values um, to make it worth it, right, to use this unordered map. Okay, so uh, some interesting things to note there. Unordered map is not always better, right? But there are situations where it is faster and where these costs of doing this data pre-processing and reconstructing a vector um, um, you know, are actually worth it, you know, for the size reduction of the vector that we have to sort. Right? Now, of course, the, the final thing we should check is what about our flat hash map, right? Do we see any advantage there? And it turns out our flat hash map makes it almost always worth it to use the flat hash map over just calling std sort directly. So if we compare almost all of these cases, they're almost all better than just calling std sort. So when we have, you know, to the 14 size vector, random numbers between 0 and 10, it's 148 microseconds versus 309, almost twice as fast. We bump it up a little bit, it's 130 microseconds versus 427. Then for the um, between 0 and 1000, it's 226 versus 577, so still a huge improvement there. And then you see here, we, we fall off a bit when we have a 2 to the 14 vector with a ton of unique values, so 10,000 potentially, 1,000 microseconds versus about 676. So it turns out it, it doesn't, it's not always better, but it's mostly better. And you know, if we compare it to our unordered map implementation, we, we can see that every single one of the flat hash map ones are better than the unordered map, right? So just another very interesting thing to kind of note um, when, when we're looking at these containers, right, the standard library doesn't always present us with the best option. Sometimes using a more specialized container from a library like Absail or something can provide us some benefits that, you know, that might not be directly apparent if we use the, the standard complying containers that are part of the standard library. Um, but it seems like our flat hash map is providing us quite a bit of benefit here. So if we look in the most extreme case, our, our 2 to the 16 size vector with random numbers between 0 and 10,000. It's about 15, 1,600 microseconds versus you know, 2,800 getting towards 2,900 microseconds, right? Huge improvement in performance, right? And this is all coming from the fact that we're paying a price for doing this pre-processing, but we're saving so much more time than sorting this enormous vector, this enormous vector of two to the 16 elements, right? Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. An interesting case study of applying something like duplicate filtering to solve another problem. Now, sorting, of course, is the only problem you can solve with duplicate filtering, um, but it is one unique one that we can show here. Um, but that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. As always, you can find all of this code on my GitHub page at github.com slash coffeebeforearch. So in this case, it's under miscellaneous code, it's under sorting, and you can find these benchmarks. And I'll also put a link uh, below to the Absail documentation where we got flat hash map from. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.